Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to look at another amulet and this one has a lot of focus around mana. Uh, it seems to be like this particular item was specifically designed to um, assist you in recovering all of your mana uh, on, in any way, shape, and form that it can get it back to you, which is pretty darn cool. So if you're a character who has issues with mana, uh, you might perhaps think about using the Crescent Moon Amulet. The Crescent Moon Amulet is only level 50, and uh, it is not too bad as far as level requirement goes. Uh, you can definitely use this as a mid-game character. Um, it has a pretty massive amount of mana steal of 15%, and it only varies by 4%. So it goes down as low as 11%, and it rolls as high as 15 which is pretty darn amazing. The life steal varies by 3%. It does vary by 3 to 6%. Uh, but at 6%, with 15% mana steal, the Crescent Moon is quite a beast in restoring your mana and hit points already. Uh, we also have a strong bonus to 45 to mana, which, believe it or not, on a lot of characters, especially low level ones, 45 mana can be a pretty huge boon. As you can see, I only have 150, and when I throw on Crescent Moon, I'm rocking 195. Um, it practically increases my hit points by 25%, or my, my mana points by 25% as a. Uh, a melee character. Um, I actually have used this quite a few times on uh, on bow Amazons because they are particularly heavy on the mana costs. Um, it also gives you magic damage reduced by 10, which is pretty amazing, and it is static. Um, and that is a pretty huge amount of magic damage reduced. It also gives you 10% damage taken goes to mana. So not only is it giving you a 15% mana steal and a bonus to your mana, it's also giving you 10% of all physical damage that you take will help restore your mana. So essentially how that works is if you take 100 damage, you will essentially restore 10 mana to your health. You will still take 100 damage, but you will restore 10 mana, which is absolutely amazing. Um, it also gives you a negative 2 light radius. Not really sure what that's about, other than maybe it's uh, related to the moon. Now... This particular amulet can actually be useful on an energy shield sorceress because of that really high magic damage reduced by number, the bonus to mana, the dead 10% damage taken goes to mana. Um, it is also particularly good on melee characters because of that 10% damage taken goes to mana. And it is actually pretty good on ranged characters as well. Um, basically, any character that hits with a physical attack of some kind can utilize the life and mana steal, and any character that's in melee range can utilize the damage taken goes to mana. And of course, the plus to mana can be utilized by anybody. Um, this particular amulet I have found is absolutely great on uh, mana hog type characters. I have used it on a Vengeance Paladin with relative success. I have used it on a Freezing Arrow Amazon with relative success. Um, I have also used it on a Barbarian and a Druid with relative success. It is just a really amazing amulet all around. And granted, it does not have the plus to skills like Mars Kaleidoscope. It doesn't have resistances. Um, and there are a lot of downsides to this amulet. Um, but it can be used to effectively replace your rings, believe it or not. So you don't need life and mana steel rings. Um, and at which point you can hopefully build your resistances or, or maybe your plus to skills or whatever with your rings instead. Um, it just kind of depends. Um, I have actually a lot of the times kept this in my cube, believe it or not, um, and swapped back and forth between this as needed to help restore my mana. Um, it's just that good that literally putting this amulet on will almost solve every single mana issue that you have on characters that are just completely stupidly broken in mana consumption. Um, now, if you are a caster type, obviously this isn't going to be too much of a benefit to you because, you know, casters do not actually hit things uh, not usually anyway and uh, if you're not doing physical damage you're not leeching life back uh, so do keep that in mind now uh, where can you find this amulet uh, if you were uh, particularly looking for it uh, let's go over to silospend.com and uh, let's take a look and see what the uh, calculator says so we're going to go to the crescent moon amulet we're going to go to the bosses. We're going to pretend we have about 150% magic find, and uh, we're going to look at the probabilities here. 
So uh, it looks like to me, Andorial and Hell is a 1 in 1,647 chance, and that is the best chance. So Hell Andorial is the best chance for this particular amulet. Uh, Nightmare Mephisto is actually not bad, and neither is Diablo or Bale in Nightmare difficulty. Um, normal difficulty Bale actually has a pretty good chance of dropping this with a uh, 1 in 2,480 on a quest kill. Um, and um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we also have, we got a lot of Bale, we got a lot of Diablo, we got a lot of Mephisto, a lot of Duriel. And uh, most of these are not normal difficulty, they're Nightmare and Hell. But uh, but apparently normal Bale is high enough level to drop this item. That's interesting. Uh, let's take a look at these super uniques. And uh, in the super uniques we have Neelithak, the Summoner, Radamant, the Countess, Hephaesto, the Cow King. Bishibosh has a pretty decent chance actually. And Rakanishu, not bad. Um, as well as Pindle Skin. Um, all of these are in Hell Difficulty, uh, with the exception of Pindle Skin. For some reason, he's higher in Nightmare uh, than he is in Hell Difficulty. Um, that's interesting. Hmm. And let's take a look at areas, and we'll see if we can figure out what kind of areas we're looking at. Um, so according to this, um, I see Chaos Sanctuary. I see Jail Level 1, 2, and 3. Throne of Destruction, Worldstone Keep. Um, Frozen Wiver, I, I see Cellar, Crystalline Passage, a lot of ghosts here. I notice that ghosts tend to drop a lot of uh, rings and amulets anyway because they're restricted from uh, dropping weapons and armor. So maybe that's why in particular ghosts uh, have a much higher probability of dropping these items than a lot of other monsters. Um, it seems to pretty much just be pointing out like almost every single ghost in the game for the higher probability chances. Um, so perhaps um, you could go into uh, Arcane Sanctuary. Let's see if that's on the list. Yes, yeah, so the specters in Arcane Sanctuary are pretty high on that list. Um, jail level 1, 2, and 3 is full of wraiths. That's why it pulls those out. And that's actually near the top of the list. So it's literally pointing out the um, jail level 3, jail level 2, jail level 1, and cathedral ghosts. All of them have a relatively high probability of dropping this uh, this amulet. So, uh, so keep that in mind. And, uh, you know... With these um, amulets, I know that there's not a super huge amount of information to talk about. I can't upgrade them. I can't uh, go through the process of, um, you know, socketing them and talking about what sockets you can put in these items. But they're still relatively amazing items that, um, that, that you know, have, have their uses. And, uh, and I'd also like to hear from you guys what you guys think. So, uh, you know, what what is your uses for this particular amulet um you know i've gone over mine i've talked about um you know what kind of characters i've utilized it on but um but i'd like to hear your stories as well um anyway as always i do appreciate you guys and gals watching these videos and um keep watching